So we're going to be taking a look at an antenna today. It's up on the roof. It's my uh, two meter J pole antenna. And so we're going to be taking a look at the return loss. So let me change the frequency here. We'll start it at uh, 100 megahertz and we'll stop it at 200 megahertz. And uh, you can see we get this dip here right around the uh, two meter band, the 144 megahertz band. And it's got a bunch of little wigglies on it and stuff, but that's due to the kind of reflections in the cable and stuff. We'll talk about that later. Um, but this is what we're going to be interested in today. So um, to get here, we, we do a mode network analyzer. We're looking at S11. Okay, so this is an S11 measurement. And S11 is just how well matched is the thing you're measuring. It's expected to be 50 ohms. And uh, it's kind of inverted, but the lower you go, the more 50 ohms you are. So it's nice and 50 ohms here. We could turn the marker on and we can say here, it's a little bit long, but 147 megahertz, it's, a, it's got a good match. Um, I should adjust the antenna, it's a little bit off. Okay, so uh, today what we're gonna do is a, a different thing. Um, we're gonna combine two things together. One is what's called a TDR measurement, time domain reflectometry, and, um, and this measurement, the S11. We're gonna combine the two, but let's first take a look at uh, the time domain. This is the frequency domain, this is our return loss. If we go to mode and we turn on uh, TDR, uh, let's see here, let's exit here, TDR, Measure distance default. There we go. So here's distance default. Distance default, it's going to be measuring the, um, it's basically looking at return loss um, in the time domain. So this is zero. So it's sending out waves and it's looking at the phase relationship of those reflected waves. And it sees a whole bunch being reflected back here. So let's turn a marker on and we can see right here at about 41 meters, we're getting a whole bunch of reflection back, okay? Now, is that exactly 41 meters? It's 41 meters electrically. Um, you can, let's see here, measure, measurement setup. You can set, in this particular thing, you can look up a cable, uh, let's see, recall cable. So it has, has all, of the, all of the cables in here we can say, oh, well, we've got uh, FG50, FG58. I think it's at the bottom here, yeah. We've got RG, I mean, RG, RG58, and we are going to recall that file. And then uh, you saw things change. We'll put our marker back on, and our marker back on normal. There we go. And now it's measuring only 27 meters. And that's because of the uh, velocity factor of the coax. Now we're not gonna be too interested in that today, but it, it is of interest. So this is, is this distance default. Um, we can change, we can kind of zoom in on this. So what do we want to do? Let's go, let's go to uh, 40, 40 meters. So we can set the stop distance at 40 meters. And there we've zoomed in more. This is our antenna right here where this big spike is there, okay? And we can look along the way and we can kind of see there's some other little other little spikes here. They might be discontinuities. It might be where you're going around a corner and you bent the cable too far. I actually have a BNC. Um, let's see here, let's put this marker on here. I'll put the number one marker right here, right where it's kind of going halfway. Okay, put the marker right there. I'll put on marker two and we'll look at this spike right here and see see what that might be. Now, um, I have a BNC to BNC uh, female to female adapter in the middle. So I've got two cables that are put together to, to get me up on the roof. And I'm gonna disconnect that, uh, I'm gonna disconnect that connector right there. All right, and now you can see that discontinuity went really, really big. That's because I disconnected and I'm getting a 100% reflectivity uh, right where that BNC was. So let me put the BNC back on. And there we go, we have a little bit of a bump, but it's not, it's not too bad. The big bump here is out of the antenna, but be aware that that's there. Okay, so um, we can use this information in a strange way. 
First of all, we know distance to faults, the distance to reflections and stuff. But you can see there's some other little ones in here as well, right? Uh, let's see here, marker. Uh, one here at about uh, five meters away and one here at about two meters away. So there's certain things going on in the cable that might be um, part of my problem getting, getting signal out. So um, let's see if I can reproduce this. We can go to, oops, we can go to um, the network analyzer again and we can set up our network analyzer. I'm going to put in 1,001 points um, and I'm going to set the frequency again to start at 100 megahertz and stop at 200 megahertz. All right, so again, this we've seen before. Uh, and what I'm going to do is more, let's see here, where is it? Measurement setup, yeah, measurement setup. There's a button called transform. So there's a bunch of mathematics that you can use to transform between time domain and frequency domain. It's called a fast, it's called a Fourier transformer, a Fourier transform. It's, it's a mathematical trick to use trigonometric functions to go back and forth between time domain and frequency domain. This is frequency domain. We can go to time domain by turning on the transform, okay? And uh, we get some funny picture. But uh, what we really need to know is uh, it's farther away. So the, the stop is here at 10 nanoseconds and our reflection is gonna be way up there. So let's, let's set the start and stop time. So let's do the stop time at one microsecond, okay? All right, so here we are in, um, here we are in time domain, and we get the same kind of picture. It's going along just fine that we get this big interruption here, which is where the antenna is, and we can have a marker. And so that big interruption is actually happening at about 270 nanoseconds, right? At 270 nanoseconds of reflection, that's where our, our antenna is. It uses math to correct that into meters using the velocity factor and other things that we just saw, but it's using time actually internal to the calculations and stuff. But this is our time domain, all right? So what we can do is we can, let's see here. Uh, let's see, measurement setup. Oops. Sorry, you might hear some Spanish being talked in the background. I'm having my backyard work done. Uh, let's see here, settings. Um, nope, that's not where it is. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here, transform settings. Uh, stop time. Okay, stop time. Let's do 500 nanoseconds. That will zoom us in a bit. There we go. That's kind of the same picture, right? This is where our discontinuity is. All right. So when we um, are interested in measure, so a lot of people say, oh, you can't measure the SWR of your antenna when it's out on a cable because the cable introduces loss and other discontinuities and stuff. It's really best to measure the antenna just by itself. And a lot of people will take their nano VNA and climb up a pole and <laughs> try to measure their antenna right at the antenna. But you can do it in a more clever way. And so let me show you that. All right, so we are going to go to markers. We're going to turn the marker table on so we can see things. All right, we are going to take our marker here and we know that's the antenna. So we're going to move over here and we're going to say right about here about 260 nanoseconds is a kind of be just before the antenna and we'll turn on marker two and we'll come I'll come way out over here this is way past the antenna 
Um, we'll just we'll just put it here 390 nanoseconds. Okay, so we have our two markers. Okay, so really anything that has to do with the antenna is sort of here. Everything else has to do with the cable and connectors and adapters and all that other stuff. All the other wigglies. This is the this is what the antenna is doing. So what we're going to do is uh, let's see here. We're going to transform gating gating start stop. All right, we're going to do what's called gating. We're going to set our start stop times of gating to these two markers. So we're going to have uh, this one we'll set to 260 nanoseconds. That's that's where we're going to begin our interest area and our exit area is going to be around 390. We'll put in 390 nanoseconds. So we've set some markers here um, that we're going to be used what's called gating. Okay, it's going to be removing everything else, but just be interested in here. Okay, I'm going to turn gating on, and you can see that these real faint blue line. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this is two faint lines where our, our gating stop, stop start stop is. Okay, we're still in the time domain here. We're getting a whole bunch of reflections and stuff um, outside of that. But um, what we're really going to do this is this is kind of confusing. We are going to turn our transform off. So um, let's see. Let me, yeah, this, this makes sense. I'm going to go back to here first. Kind of ignore that for a second. All right. Remember this picture. This was our return loss. And here was all the little wigglies. And here's all that other stuff, OK? If I tell the instrument, only look at data that comes in a certain time domain right around the antenna. No other place along the cable, no other place after the antenna, just right at the antenna. That's what gating on does, okay? And that is the true SWR return loss of our antenna. Ignoring cables, ignoring all the connectors, the adapters, just the antenna. It's giving us a really nice pure picture of what the antenna is doing. And we can do that by this um, this uh, time domain gating, okay, time gating in S11 measurements. I know it's really weird, um, but that's what it is, gating off and gating on. And it was like we went up to the pole and disconnected the coax and put our little nano VNA directly, or actually this thing, you could climb this up on the top of the pole. That's kind of what it was invented for. And you can measure that directly. But here is a trick where you can do this. Now, um, it's, it's a fancy instrument to be able to do this. You can do it with other instruments if you do it externally, if you run it in a MATLAB or something and you write your own programs to do these FFTs. The Fourier transform is the um, mathematics that goes back and forth between time domain and frequency domain. An FFT is a fast Fourier transform. It's just an algorithm. The FFT was invented just to speed things up in computer land. If you hear FFT, it's a, fa it's a Fourier transform, but it's fast. That's, that's all it stands for. It's a particular type of algorithm. Okay, there you go. I hope I didn't confuse people too much, but um, yeah, we can use this cool gating to take this ugly picture that we're all used to and just say, Ignore everything else. Just look at the antenna and then poof, magically, you get the antenna all by itself. It's very nice.